So guys, today let's talk about Robin Hood and dividends, but more importantly, let's talk about how to start dividend investing with Robin Hood. <sighs> so as most of you know, if you are sub, sub to this channel or if you've seen me before, um, I do a lot of content on dividend investing in the stock market, mostly with uh, the app of Robin Hood. To me, this is one of the easiest apps that you can use. This is like for beginners. It, in my opinion, it was pretty much made for beginners, for people who doesn't have a lot of knowledge in how a brokerage works, how the stock market works. Um, this is one of the best brokerages to date, in my opinion. This may not be the perfect app. This may not be the perfect brokerage. There are some out there that others may consider better. But for me, the simpler, the better. And this is one of the simplest apps to use. And I just like the fact of the whole platform in general. You know, I like the fact that they came out first with pretty much uh, commission-free trading and everyone else jumped on the bandwagon after. And they also have some good stuff coming out this year, as you guys know, fractional shares, drip, all that, the um, the Robinhood card. So with that being said about Robinhood, one of the easiest forms of investing is dividend investing. Once you know what you're looking for, it can become very, very simple, um, almost automated whenever you start dividend investing. You get paid easier and faster, uh, with dividend investing than you do with growth investing. Most of the time, anyway, uh, you get paid more, should I say, um, with these dividends. And today we're gonna go over how to start dividend investing with Robinhood. Why not combine the two simplest together, dividend investing and Robinhood, and show you guys how I started and how you guys can start in 2020, because, because why not start today? Um, so whenever you open up your brokerage account with Robinhood, um, if you want to, I have a link in the description. If you open it up using the link in the description, you'll get a free stock and I get a free stock. So you'll be ahead of the game once you start already. If not, it's all good. Um, but it's there if you guys want to join using my affiliate link in the description. But after you get that all set up, once you start looking for stocks, um, the, a good place to start is look at what you use every day. Look at what you use daily. Look at what you consume daily. A lot of these products are on the stock market. For instance, Coca-Cola. Um, I don't necessarily drink Coke, but you know, I'll drink Dasani and other Coke products. So if I drink these daily, then I know that many other people are drinking them daily as well. So that would be a good place to look. Um, you know, toothpaste, Colgate, uh, Starbucks, McDonald's, Walmart, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, Google, you know, <laughs> there are many things out there you can start with. You know, we all use these products daily, um, but choose one that you really like, one that you would like to buy, one that you, you would like to make money with. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna check and see if it has a dividend. Once you check and see if it has a dividend yield, then what you would do is you wanna look at the payout ratio. And the payout ratio is the amount of company's earnings that is paid out in dividends. And generally speaking, a good rule of thumb is if the payout ratio is 60% or higher, um, that's kind of a sketchy situation. If they're paying out more than, than you know 60%, um, that's kind of you know terms on saying let me look deeper into this company uh or let me not mess with this company at all because how sustainable is giving out 60 percent of their earnings or higher every month but good thing is REITs are they have to give close to 90 percent of their income so that is a reason why most REITs are very very high payout ratio if you guys don't know what REITs are i'll leave a link to a video I made describing what REITs are in the comments. If you wanna check that out, be my guest. So once you find you a stock you want to invest in um, and you see that it is a dividend paying stock, what you wanna do is, the easiest and simplest way to find all the information you need on it is go to dividend.com. Now once you get on dividend.com, you're gonna type in the ticker symbol in the search bar and what that's gonna pull up is all the information you're gonna need when it comes to this dividend uh, paying stock in relation to the dividend itself. So the first bit of information you'll get from dividends.com is a dividend yield. Dividend yield being the relation between a stock's annual payout and its current stock price. So this will be the percent you'll be, you'll be getting paid every year. And with a dividend yield, you generally, the higher it is, sometimes the more riskier it is. A 4% though is a safe roundabout. Anywhere from 3.5 to 4.5% is a safe um, dividend yield. Anything higher 
is a little alarming or a, you know, you may have to look further into the company to see why it's so high. Ford has a higher PE, uh, I'm sorry, Ford has a higher dividend yield, but I believe Ford is a great company, at least a great dividend company. Um, I don't own a Ford though, actually. So uh, it is one of my better, one of my more favorable companies, but that is my opinion. Um, and once you start learning how everything works, you will definitely be able to pick these stocks a lot faster and a lot easier, you know? Next, what you're gonna look at is the annualized payout. And all the annualized payout is, is how much money you're gonna get in one year from owning one share of this stock. And this is generally broken down into quarters. You'll have four quarters each year, so that means every three months you'll be getting paid. So if the, so if the annualized payout is $1 per share, per year, you're gonna get 25 cents every three months. <laughs> now, some companies are monthly dividend paying stocks, mostly REITs um, and ETFs and such. <clears throat> so they pay out 12 times a year, which is every month. So then you would look at the annualized payout and divide it by 12 instead of four. Next thing would be the payout ratio, which you guys already know what the payout ratio is. And like I said, if it's 60 or above, that's something you kind of gonna wanna stay away from in the beginning once you're just learning how to you know, play these stocks when it comes to dividend investing. Now, next is one of my favorite bits of information, which is the dividend growth. And this is the number of years an annualized payout has been increased consistently. And generally, the higher the number is, the better. So, so think of it like this. You can have a company that has increased its dividend yield for the past two years, or you can have a company that has increased its dividend the past 20 years. Hmm. Which one would you want? The one that for sure is gonna increase it again, or the one who just started increasing their dividend? The higher, the better. And when you're looking at this dividend year, um, there are two different categories of, well, I guess you could say three different categories. The term dividend arist aristocrat. This means any company that has raised their annual payout consecutively for 25 years. Now that is great. If they fall under this term dividend aristocrat, then they're more likely to continue raising their dividend yield. And remember, not every not every company raises their dividend yield by the same amount of percentage. Some might raise it by 2%, some might raise it by 12% annually. It just depends on the company and the sector and how they're making money and all that. Um, but that is further information you would have to look in on their investor relations website, on the investor relations section of their website. The next term is called a dividend king. Now, dividend king is a company that has raised their annual payout consecutively for 50 years, guys. And this is when you start hitting top notch areas. This is blue chip stocks. This is stocks that have been around and have been, you know, present. They have made their presence known for quite a long time. Um, very successful companies, but not to say that they will never cut their stock. If we do fall in a recession, some may cut their stock but the longer that they have increased it and the more stable the company is, the more likely it is to not cut their stock in a recession. And when it comes to dividend investing, dividend investing is not only for passive income and monthly income, during a recession, dividend stocks generally do better because people get out of the growth stocks that are losing money and not paying them anything and they get into or already have um, dividend paying stocks, which is even though if you're tanking, if you're losing money on your capital gains, on your percent of the stock, you're still making money from the dividend yield, from the dividend of the stock. This is why dividends are so appealing when it comes to uh, a recession and in general. And to me, it's just one of the easiest ways to make passive income. You put a little bit of work up front and the more you run these numbers and you figure it out, the easier it'll get, guys. And so once you have all this figured out and you know what numbers you want and all that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to said company's website. You're gonna go to the div <clears throat> you're gonna go to the investor relations area of that website and it'll pull up everything you're gonna wanna know about the past, present, and future of that company. It's gonna tell you, you're gonna wanna read 10Ks and you're gonna wanna read earnings reports. Um, Robinhood does give you a tiny little bit of information on some of this when it comes to you know the PE ratio and the market cap and the uh, and the EPS. Once you become a more seasoned investor, you'll be able to get through these tasks a lot quicker. You'll be able to know what you're looking for on these reports in order to see if it's a company you're going to want to buy or not. But since everything has been tanking with the coronavirus, I just want to pull up my. Uh, 
my Robinhood portfolio just to be transparent and show you guys what I've been losing and how I've been gaining and all that. But uh, if you guys were uh, on the market this week, you'll know. I actually filmed this Monday, February 3rd. So as you can see here, um, I'm actually up about $8 on the day. It would have been more, but you know, sometimes it just doesn't work in your favor. But I'm not worried about it. My portfolio could be losing value, but I'm still gaining money from my dividends. And I just want to show you guys like this here. I just want to show you guys. So today I'm up. For the week, I am, I'm down $24. For the month, I'm up $26. And for the past three months, I'm up $162.69. But that is that's all from pretty much gains. That's not from um, dividends, because Robinhood doesn't show the dividends like that in your portfolio. What it does, it goes all into your buying power, and then from there, you can use it to buy more stocks. But I just want to be as transparent with you guys as possible. So I'm going to show you the dividends I have been I have been getting over the past uh, month or so, and over the past since I started this here. Um, you know we're working with relatively small numbers, but for such a small portfolio, I'm getting close to you know I was getting less than five dollars per month. Now I'm getting over ten dollars per month from reinvesting my dividends and constantly adding money to my, to my portfolio every week. I don't know what happened there just now, guys. But look, low, you know, the dollar ranges, as you can say, MJ, $4.80, $4.80. I do have some that are bigger than others, Ford, $4.95. And every month, these are going up because I'm adding money to them. So this is how it starts, guys. Don't be afraid to start with small money because small money will grow into big money over time if you do it correctly and consistently, guys. I feel like I've been talking for a little too long. I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here, guys. So look, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and smash that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm because it helps this channel out more than you guys will ever know. And if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. And while you're down there, click that little notification bell to know the next time we come out with some more great videos like this, guys. Remember, I'm here to teach you and learn with you guys. So let me know in the comments below if this was helpful, if it was. And if you want to continue your journey to financial enlightenment with me, go ahead and click on one of these videos. All right, guys.